President Joe Biden's administration on Friday asked the Supreme Court to lift a lower court's order blocking his plan to cancel billions of dollars in student debt. The president's idea would benefit millions of Americans and cost the government an estimated $400 billion. We will forgive. In trying to fulfill a 2020 campaign promise, Biden announced in August that the U.S. government would forgive up to $10,000 in student loan debt for borrowers making less than $125,000 a year, or $250,000 for married couples. But that plan was challenged by six Republican-led states who argued it skirted congressional authority and threatened future state revenues. A federal judge dismissed their case for lacking legal standing, though a lower court in Missouri ruled to block Biden's plan while the states appeal the federal judge's decision. President Biden doesn't back away from a fight. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre on Friday said it's outrageous Biden's plan to help Americans is getting pushback. Many will be saved from delinquency or default. Others will be able to buy a home, a car, or just start a family. This is critical breathing room that many middle class families were looking forward to. And it's outrageous, just outrageous that Republican officials and special interest group are trying to block that, are trying to make it harder uh, for these middle class Americans across the country. The Justice Department in a filing has now asked the Supreme Court to squash the lower court's decision, saying it leaves millions of vulnerable borrowers in limbo. The department also suggested the high court could hear the dispute itself and make a decision on it by the end of June. Appointing a special counsel at this time is the right thing to do. The extraordinary circumstances presented here demand it. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced on Friday the appointment of a special counsel to oversee the Justice Department's investigations into Donald Trump who just three days earlier announced he is running for president again in 2024. Garland said that made the appointment of a special counsel imperative. Based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election, and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. Garland named Jack Smith as special counsel, a political independent who had been prosecuting Kosovo war crimes for the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Garland said Smith will oversee both the investigation into Trump's handling of classified government documents and the probe into attempts to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election. Mr. Smith will begin his work as special counsel immediately and will be returning to the United States from The Hague. Smith, who previously oversaw the Justice Department's public integrity section, said in a statement, quote, I will exercise independent judgment and will move the investigations forward expeditiously and thoroughly to whatever outcome the facts and the law dictate. In a statement to Fox News, Trump said he won't partake in the special counsel's investigations and has called them politically motivated witch hunts. An official speaking on condition of anonymity said the White House was not involved in the decision to appoint a special counsel, and Biden did not respond to multiple shouted questions from reporters about the appointment during his only public appearance of the day. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman arrived at a summit of world leaders in Thailand on Friday. His first-class welcome underscoring his comfort among his peers, despite his alleged involvement in the brutal killing of a U.S.-based Saudi journalist. Any lingering worry he might have felt likely lifted after the White House said the prince, known as MBS, had immunity in a civil lawsuit filed by the former fiancé of Jamal Khashoggi, who was murdered and dismembered inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul in 2018. The decision by the Biden administration granting MBS immunity drew immediate condemnation from Khashoggi's former fiance, Hatice Chenges, who tweeted, quote, We thought maybe there would be a light to justice from USA, but again, money came first. The Washington Post journalist had criticized the Crown Prince's policies. He was killed by Saudi government agents, an operation U.S. intelligence believed was ordered by MBS 
the de facto ruler of the kingdom. Riyadh said the operation was conducted by rogue elements and that MBS was not involved. A spokesperson for the White House National Security Council said in a written statement, the immunity decision was a, quote, legal determination made by the State Department under longstanding and well-established principles of customary international law. Justice Department lawyers said the executive branch of U.S. government, referring to the Biden administration, had determined that as a head of state of a foreign government, bin Salman has immunity from U.S. courts. The Saudi government communications office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. A California judge Friday sentenced Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes to more than 11 years in prison for defrauding investors in her now defunct blood testing startup. Is there anything that you want to say to the uh, investors and the patients who have such faith in you? The sentence for three counts of investor fraud and one count of conspiracy comes after a jury convicted the 38-year-old back in January. Dressed in a dark blouse and black skirt, Holmes hugged her parents and her partner after the sentence was handed down. During the hearing, Holmes cried as she said she was devastated by her failures and would have done many things differently if she had the chance. Adding, quote, I have felt deep shame for what people went through before I failed them. Before handing down the sentence, the judge called the case troubling on so many levels, questioning what motivated Holmes, a brilliant entrepreneur, to misrepresent her company to investors. Once valued at $9 billion, Theranos promised to revolutionize how patients receive diagnoses by replacing traditional labs with small machines envisioned for use in homes, drugstores, and even on the battlefield. But the startup collapsed after a series of articles in the Wall Street Journal in 2015 questioned its technology. When she was 30, Holmes was dubbed the world's youngest female self-made billionaire in 2014 by Forbes. At trial, Prosecutors said Holmes engaged in fraud by lying to investors about Theranos' technology and finances, rather than allowing the company to fail. The judge set Holmes' surrender date for April. Her lawyers are expected to ask the judge to allow her to remain free on bail during her appeal. Stocks rallied to end higher on Friday after a choppy trading session, as investors eventually shrugged off hawkish comments by a Federal Reserve official about more aggressive interest rate hikes. The Dow rose nearly six-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 gained almost half a percent, and the Nasdaq posted a marginal gain. Federal Reserve Bank of Boston leader Susan Collins on Friday said the Fed may need to deliver another 75 basis point rate hike as there was little evidence that price pressures were waning. Her comments came a day after St. Louis Fed President James Bullard set off equity declines when he said the Fed needs to keep raising rates as its tightening so far, quote, had only limited effects on observed inflation. While markets rebounded Friday, Lisa Erickson, senior vice president, head of public markets group at U.S. Bank Wealth Management, sees more down days ahead. We certainly are cautious about the Fed speak that's coming out. And as we see it, while there certainly have been some indications that there could be a slower rate of pace of rate hikes going forward, certainly uh, the focus has been really firmly on the message that they want to combat those ongoing price pressures. And with that, really the overall direction is for them to continue to uh, continue to keep on a tighter course in order to, again, try to bring down those elevated inflation pressures. And with that, what we really are seeing is a strong headwind to the equity market. In company news, Gap shares rose 7.6 percent after the retailer beat Wall Street estimates for quarterly sales and profit. And shares of Live Nation Entertainment slumped 7.8 percent after the New York Times reported that the U.S. Justice Department was investigating whether the Ticketmaster parent had abused its power over the multi-billion dollar live music industry. Mm -hmm.